Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss about the third year of the PhD. And I have made videos about the first and second year of the PhD also and what are the things you should do during these years if you are a PhD student. Now in this video series, I'm presuming that you are in a program which will give you a PhD or you can get a PhD in five years. So if you are somebody who is in a three year program, you have to effectively scale these guidelines I'm going to give you to fit within a three year paradigm. And of course, if you are somebody who is in a six or seven year program, you need to scale it accordingly. So I mentioned in my previous videos that the first two years of the PhD, what you should do is do the coursework, establish a good relation with your supervisor, do a literature survey, find the research gap, write a PhD proposal, take the qualifying exam, take the comprehensive exam and also if possible maybe write a paper or start to think about writing a paper. Now the first two years are also the best phase to decide if you do want to leave the PhD program because if things are not gelling out well with you it's a good idea to exit in the first two years. So if you want to take a look at these two videos I'm going to put them in the end screen and also in the description box. So let's begin. So I'm going to divide this video into six parts and then I hope you'll be able to get a benefit from all these six points. So let's start with point number one and this is you need to start doing the research very actively and hopefully if you are a precocious student you have put some time in doing research even during your first and second year but if not this is the time to start beginning on this research journey. So I'm going to give you five points about doing the research because I always believe that if you have a pretty large problem, the best way to tackle this is to split it into five or six simple problems. So that's the way to go. So the number one thing most researchers need to do is focus on data collection and analysis. And in most fields, once you have figured out the hypothesis you have or the thesis you need to prove, you need to figure out the data you need to prove your particular hypothesis and then you need to figure out how you are going to gather this data and how you are going to study this data. So there are various methods out there, methods based on simply plotting the data, looking at them, looking at the tables or you may be somebody who is using various statistical methods to study this data. So this is the first part of the process. Now the second part is about doing experiments and these experiments can be the type of experiments we think of for example in chemistry or physics it may be with test tubes or beakers or things like that or it could be something which is very different maybe you are doing experiments in psychology in sociology you are forming study groups you are forming groups and so on. So all these things are possible and do keep in mind that a good or well done experiment is very important in most research problems. So especially if you are in disciplines such as chemistry or bio inspired disciplines you will find that most of your time is spent in doing experiments in the lab and this is the major part of your PhD thesis project. Now the third problem is for people who are sometimes in the engineering disciplines and disciplines where computational science has made a lot of progress and these are guys who do a lot of modeling and simulation. So what happens is that many physical systems can be expressed in terms of models which involve partial differential equations, differential equations or matrix equations and you need to essentially solve these type of models. So if you are in any of these disciplines you will be spending a lot of time in the computer or on the computer and then you will be getting various results from this particular problem. So simulation of course involves running this model. You may be required to run this model over a large number of samples. These samples could come from random samples of the problem. They could be stochastic simulations and so on. So again people in the engineering computing disciplines are going to spend most of their time doing modeling and simulation. But do remember that at the end of the modeling and simulation exercise you need to plot all these things, you need to make tables, you need to make graphs, you need to visualize all these results which you have created from the simulations because your advisor is not going to want to see you running the code, he will want to see you actually present the data in terms of figures and so on. Now the next part here is about 
optimization and sometime the iterations you need to do on the previous method. So very often what happens is that you collect some data, you do some modeling, you do some experiments and then you find that you need to actually collect more data, you need to do more experiments, you need to tweak your models, you need to do different simulations and so on. So essentially this is like a loop over the first three problems which I discussed today and so you will need to loop on this. Now sometimes people who are more formally inclined mathematically they may use formal optimization methods to solve some of these problems. So that is an entire branch of research. I made a whole video set on that. I'm going to put it in the playlist. If you are somebody who is interested in bringing optimization into your problem, you can certainly do so. Now the fifth point is going to be about the final hypothesis or final thesis or the design of the problem. And this is something which you are going to actually propose at the end of your PhD is your major discovery. So essentially all this research which you do is going to lead to this proposition of the major discovery. So you need to keep in mind what is this discovery? Is it some new molecule you have created for solving some disease? Or is it some new chemical you have created for fixing some problem which is involving a lot of problems for humanity or maybe you have reduced vibration in some mechanical system. So you need to keep in mind number five is also something linked to design. So in many cases particularly in engineering and computer areas you need to create some kind of a design at the end of your PhD especially if you are in a practical field such as mechanical engineering or aerospace engineering or chemical engineering for that matter. So now this was number one problem about doing the research. Let us turn to number two problem it, which is to write the research. Now this writing the research is something which often differentiates the people who work in universities and PhD programs compared to the guys who actually do research in companies and even sometime in national lab and other places. So what do you need to do as a PhD is that you not only need to do the research but every now and then you need to put all this research work together, you need to collate the different things you have done, the experiments, the modeling, the results and so on and write a paper. Now there are various forums where you can essentially present this kind of research work. You can present it in various conferences which are held around the world and in your country or you can submit it to journals. So generally journal publication is regarded as the best forum for publishing papers and what happens is that when you submit a paper to the journal it goes through a peer review process there are experts in the field who are going to review your paper and they are going to suggest various changes you can make on this paper and sometimes they may even reject your paper so this is a pretty negative part of the phd process is that you are going to start receiving pretty harsh reviews from the experts in your field now sometimes there are people who also write internal reports. These reports may be in your own department or university and there are also people who need to submit some reports to the people who have funded the research. So this is pretty common in countries such as the US and even Europe where most of the research is funded by somebody and so what happens is that you need to write a report every quarter or every semester about what work you have done and this all comes in handy because anything which you write whether it's in Microsoft Word or in LaTeX becomes very useful for you when you want to write a journal paper or even your thesis. So always make it a habit of writing your research down every now and then. Don't wait for the third, fourth or fifth year to write your work out. Don't only continue doing the research work and not think about writing the papers. So the next point is going to be about publishing the paper. And here of course like I mentioned some aspects before you need to find a proper journal. This journal could be found from for example perusing some of the references you have been citing in your work or which you have been consulting very frequently. These references will tell you which journal people in your field are publishing in and you can then publish your paper there. I would suggest that you try to publish at least one journal paper during your PhD program and preferably publish three to five journal paper. Now I have made many videos on these topics. Hopefully I'm going to leave some of them in the end screen or in the description box. Now the fourth point is about presentation. And presentations are very important because it's not only enough or not only sufficient that you write the papers, but you also need to present this work somewhere else. 
So what you need to do is present this in seminars in your own department. So many departments have a seminar every week. So try to hook up with the professor who holds these seminars and maybe present your work. And also you need to target some national or international conference where you can present this work because what happens is that in the long run the presentation skills are extremely important for a researcher and most of the communication actually takes place verbally so you need to make sure that you are communicating well in an oral setting this is a very important skill which is going to help you also in getting a job because wherever you go for a job after you finish your phd they are going to ask you to make a presentation about your research and also they may ask you to teach a particular sample course or during those time your presentation skills are going to be very important. Now the fifth point is about soft skills and some of this I mentioned in my previous talk about presentation but there are soft skills beyond presentation and these involve things such as listening, such as working in teams, such as dealing with authority figures like your supervisor in a positive manner and these are very important because if you are unable to deal with your supervisor, if you are unable to deal with team members it's going to be very hard to actually function properly in a job because as you know most organizations are complex structures they have large number of people and politics is a part of any organizational system so make sure you develop various soft skills again I have made a video on that hopefully I will leave it in the description box finally the last issue is about mental health and during the third year people actually start getting a lot of rejections a lot of negative talk from their supervisor, a lot of negative feedback from the various reviewers they have submitted their paper to and so on. So very often this is the time when PhD students start having blues or melancholia as a normal feature of their life. Now one of the things you need to do is to have a life outside your research lab. So try to go to the gym, maybe try to go for long walks, take part in sports, take part in some musical activity, maybe take up yoga or meditation whatever suits you but be sure that you do not put all your eggs into the research basket because the way research is set up it doesn't work out well most of the time almost all the feedback you get is negative feedback and most of the time you are in a melancholy state but every now and then your paper gets accepted and you feel very good about it so that's something which you should keep in mind so i'll end this video now this was about the third year of the phd and hopefully i'll see you in the next video where I'm going to make a video about the fourth year of the PhD. So I'll see you soon.